Hey guys! Today I'm going to be interrupting your regularly scheduled Dead by Daylight weapon tutorial with a video all about blood. Permanent fake blood, to be more specific. So if you've been following along with the series so far, you'll know I've been doing a lot of experiments, different materials and techniques, trying to find a good permanent fake blood option. And some of those have been more successful than others, but I really wanted to put my struggle to rest. So I went out, I bought a ton of stuff, I mixed all of it together, I made a huge mess, but I think I finally found a solution. So if you need permanent fake blood for your props, armor, costumes, decorations, whatever, keep on watching. So as you can see, I, I really went gung-ho with this project and I tested out every combination of stuff I could find at a local store or have shipped one day from Amazon. And I was genuinely surprised by some of the things I learned by doing this. Like, like really genuinely surprised. <laughs> if you saw my hillbilly hammer tutorial, you'll know that I had a serious issue where I had a great fake blood mix made up, smeared it all over my prop, only to realize that when it was fully dry, like fully, fully dry in the light, it has this green reflective quality. And I, for the life of me, couldn't figure out how that happened. So the most, the first and most obvious sample I did was the Elmer's glue and the food coloring. And that's the food coloring that comes in those little pointy top bottles. And it worked exactly the same as it did on my props. So I wasn't crazy. It did exactly what I thought it was gonna do. It looks okay right now. I mean, it's lost a lot of its gloss finish, which I thought was strange, but definitely worth noting. But as you can see, it legitimately looked like oil slick. That was the only thing I could think to describe it. It just had this metallic shine that couldn't be ignored. Like, it looked great with no light on it, which is great, but... As soon as the light hits it, instead of getting this nice glossy shine, you get gasoline. Which is terrible, like I didn't want that. So, I started off with Elmer's glue versus food coloring. To figure out which of these was the culprit behind the oil slick. So I also did this one at the same time, which was triple thick mixed with the same food coloring. And I had zero expectation that it was literally going to crack and peel and totally fall off before I could even film this, but it didn't show any of the metallic green. So that's obviously some kind of chemical reaction that I can't entirely explain. At the same time, I also did this one, which is the medium weight gloss additive for acrylic paint and I put food coloring into that and this one had a totally matte finish from the get-go which is surprising and this one actually had the worst and most obvious of the green so far and you can actually kind of see it it's it all kind of pulled at the bottom which is weird then I decided to try a different food coloring to see if I had the same issue and I went over here. This is McCormick brand red food coloring mixed with just Elmer's glue and just red. This is just red with no blue or green added. And this one you can still see the, the metallic stuff kind of pulled down at the bottom. It was better. It was a little better. And then I added in the blue and the green to these samples. And the color was better, but the the weird rubbery matte finish green stuff was even worse. So obviously I wasn't getting, getting anywhere with the food coloring. And I couldn't fathom why. Like what is in this that made it do that? So I did a very quick Google search as I should have done from the beginning. And I found that the answer was very simple. Food coloring is made from crude oil. Am I the only person that didn't know that? <laughs> is this common knowledge that I just wasn't aware of? Because I didn't know food coloring that goes in food was derived from crude oil. Why? So that presented something of a large problem because I needed a red dye. I needed a pure red dye. So I already had 
so strong black tint from a project they did in the past. And this I found through my testing had the least amount of oil slick reflection of everything I did. It could be because it's black, it could be because it's not transparent, but either way, this had the least amount of crude oil looking nonsense, so that's good to know. But I went out and bought this, which is a Lumalite resin tint. This is red dye made for resin. This was my first try. This is mixed with the Elmer's glue and then I darkened it with black. And this already looked amazing. It has a tiny bit of the green. It's not nearly as prominent as it was with the ones that ended up with like a matte rubbery finish. It didn't have that finish. This retained the shine that I wanted it to have. It still has a little bit of green so you can tell that that's crude oil based as well, but it was definitely better. So then, remembering that the triple thick didn't show the green, I decided to mix it with that instead. And I came out with this guy over here. And this mixing the triple thick with the Illumilite and the So Strong, I kind of got the best of everybody in that it still retains its shine, but it's not metallic green and it actually thins out pretty good. So that is my winner. So we're gonna do some more tests with that, some new tests so that I can show you exactly how it behaves firsthand so for this test, I really wanted to make sure I could cover all the bases, see what this fake blood would look like under any situation. So I made these little sample blocks with different types of paint, different finishes, just to see how this fake blood mixture looks compared to other ones. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so we're going to start with my favorite of the bunch, which is the Deco Art Triple Thick, the Illumilite Red, and the So Strong Black from Smooth Mom. I don't have a precise ratio for this, but I do know that if you mix in too much dye to your base, it will never, ever dry. I know that because I smeared it all over something and then a day later it still hadn't dried. So I learned that lesson for you. Don't repeat it. So my starting ratio for this is a half teaspoon of the triple thick gloss. Then I added three or four drops of the Illumilite red and then about a half a drop of the So Strong black. The So Strong tints are super concentrated so a tiny bit goes a very long way. So what I noticed in the tests I did previously and in this seeing it now is that this mixture and several of the other mixtures actually look much better on brown backgrounds. And I feel like that counteracts the pink or it just having a really light or metallic color behind it makes it so obvious that it's pink. I'm not entirely sure why that is. But this is the perfect solution if you're doing anything wood or anything dark colored. So this looks awesome. But I have to show you what happens if you smear it. So. so again, it doesn't look too bad on camera but it is very magenta in person. I'll see if I can better adjust the camera angle to show you how magenta it is. But I found that rather than trying to load more red dye in, it's better to just add more in once it's totally dry. That looks much more realistic. It gets much darker in the dark areas, but it just gets a little more red pigment into the, the lighter areas. I also want to test something that I haven't tried yet because I forgot to. So I bought, as part of my 
purchases for this video was some five minute epoxy which operates very similar to resin and I thought this might be cool to add pigment to. That was before I even got the resin pigment. I tried to add stuff that was not resin pigment to this and it just seized up and did nothing so that doesn't work either. But now that I have a resin tint I was going to see if that would work so we'll try that real quick. So it didn't immediately seize up like it did when I added food coloring to it. So that's a good sign. It is going to be... Actually, no. That, that consistency is not bad. Alright, cool. We're off to a much better start than the last time I tried to test this one. So the resin is... It still looks pink over top of the metallic. And over top of the white. But over top of the, um, the wood, you can't really tell. So compared to these, I'm going to also do the mixture that I used with paint prior to doing all this testing. This is simply a mixture of triple thick gloss and red and black acrylic paints. In order to make this the right consistency for splattering, I thinned it with water. I actually made it a little too thin, but that's okay. This is a very adjustable mixture. You can add less black for a brighter red blood or a little brown for a dirtier look. So all of these look great while they're still wet, but I'm excited to see how they look once they're completely dry. While those were drying, I wanted to see if the Illumilite mixture could be splattered. I mixed up another batch with the same ratio and I added a tiny little bit of water. And since this mixture contains dye made for resin, I covered myself in my best plastic tablecloth. Safety first! This mixture is a little harder to splatter than my usual paint-based blood, but it looks way better. And it also made way less of a mess. Like the other samples, it looks amazing while wet, but we'll see how it holds up after it dries. Okay, so our samples are fully dry now, and... I noticed some things between when it was initially like dry on the surface and now fully cured 24 hours later. And it was mostly this one that I did with the epoxy, which I hadn't tried before. And initially it looked really good, but as you can see now, some of the dye inside of it separated out. And you can see that. So that is probably not your best option. But the triple thick with the Illumilite red and the So Strong Black still looks pretty good. It's obviously still kind of pink here, but like I said, you can go in with another layer and that'll make it more red. But up here it looks really red, which I'm super happy about. The paint one, obviously, just is what it is. It's not super shiny. You'd have to go in with more gloss coat in order to make that more shiny and differentiate the texture. But, you know, if all you have access to is paint and you don't want to mess around with any dyes that might stain or otherwise affect your project, paint is definitely something that you can make work. You can also go in with another coat of black and darken up the areas that are supposed to be thicker and that'll make it look more realistic. But overall, this, this one is still my favorite. So I used that same one to do the splatter and this looks awesome. I hadn't tried to splatter this before, but it actually looks amazing. Because it wasn't smeared at all, there is no pink whatsoever. This retained all of its red color, even in the areas where it did thin a little bit. It stayed really red, even on top of the metallic backgrounds, which I was super happy about. Looks good on the white, looks good on the brown. And I only had to thin this mixture with a tiny bit of water. 
so it still was pretty thick. You could go more water. I'd be nervous that then it might thin the mixture too much and then you might start seeing the pink, but overall, this is a great result and it's got shine like it's still wet without having any metallic oil slicky nonsense so that's exciting i also wanted to test because i haven't tested this yet how it holds up to movement for if you'd be using it for flexible armor or something like that i've been using it just for props that aren't gonna take much flexing but gotta know for sure So these are actually all very flexible, even the epoxy. I was not expecting that. I was expecting the epoxy to just crack. But all of these, all of these mixtures can be completely flexed without cracking. Literally the only thing that cracked was the varnish I used to seal these boards. I use this type of varnish on props that aren't going to be flexed that much. So I, I don't normally have to do that to it. but. Yeah, so the varnish cracked, but the the blood didn't really. But overall, I'd say this this is going to hold up pretty well to whatever you're doing with it. So there you have it, guys. A permanent, non-tacky, non-staining, completely permanent fake blood option for all of your props, accessories, costumes, whatever you got. While this is not a perfect solution to every project, it's definitely a great jumping off point. There's a lot of other products you can look into along the same lines, but I hope I've made your search for information a little simpler. I feel this mixture can still be improved, but that's kind of my opinion about everything. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you find it helpful. I hope it saved you a lot of time scouring the internet or saved you money purchasing all of these products to find out that half of them didn't work. <laughs> and I hope you're able to bloody up some really amazing props, artwork, decorations, whatever. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. I'm sure there's plenty of things I didn't think to try in this video so if you've tried something if you've found an even better solution please share it with the rest of us because obviously the struggle is endless in this department but yeah i hope you enjoyed this video and until next time stay tuned for awesome <laughs>